All right, y'all, here is uh, some of the week two vocabulary. You guys know this stuff. I mean, you know what a carnivore is. That's too easy for you. But what you may not connect is the fact that all autotrophs are producers. And what that means, they do photosynthesis. Now, you guys know that in your world, this is plants, because that's what you can see and enjoy. Um, but I'm going to tell you that most of the production of food on our planet by autotrophs are right here in this category, phytoplankton. So algae and bacteria do way more photosynthesis than all the plants. But we don't really see these guys. I mean, sometimes you run into some algae. Um, but in the ocean is where you get the maximum amount of photosynthesis. And, I mean, we're just used to the plants. So keep that in mind. The other type of organism on our planet, if you're not an autotroph, guess what? You're a heterotroph. What that means is you eat others. And so because of that, you're a consumer. So I want you to understand that these two things mean the same thing, autotroph and producer, and heterotroph and consumer mean the same thing. Now, of the heterotrophs, you got a lot of variety. You got the ones that just eat plants, the ones that eat meat, the ones that eat both plants and meat, the ones that eat dead stuff, and then the ones that take stuff that's been dead or leftover pieces like the horns of, I don't know, a goat. Maybe somebody eats a goat, but they don't eat the horns, and the horns eventually get decomposed. I want you to remember, because these words are a little more familiar, this is mostly bacteria and fungi. And I'm not talking about Levi. He's not a fungi. I'm talking about fungus. A fungus is a living organism, and most bacteria and fungi play that role. They break down dead, uneaten material, and they return the carbon, the nitrogen, the oxygen, the hydrogen, all of the molecular structures that we learned about. They break those up, and they return them to the soil. They return them to the environment. All right, this is too easy for you. We're going to move on. This is what we call an energy pyramid, okay? And I think this works best if I pause this and pick up in a minute. But what I want you to see here is that the energy pyramid is really based off a of food chain. We got the grass, which is eaten by the grasshopper. The grasshopper is eaten by the frog. The frog is eaten by the snake. The snake's eaten by the hawk. And so it's based on a single food chain. Now, some of you ask, what's the difference between a food chain and food web? A food web is just multiple food chains put together. So, like, obviously, there's probably another predator eating the snake besides just the hawk. And clearly, like, the frog isn't just going to eat a grasshopper. He's going to eat something else. So, a food web, boys and girls, is just a more intricate food chain. Food chain is a single line of... Uh, energy transfers. So that's important to remember too. Energy is being transferred. And so that's what that arrow represents. Energy transfer in between, here we go, vocab, the trophic levels. Trophic, T-R-O-P-H-I-C, means feeding. So these are different levels that organisms uh, occupy in our model of an ecosystem the first trophic level is always the autotrophs. Okay, now I'm going to pause this video and then pick up in a little bit on the next one so we can upload a lot more smoothly. Maybe you guys want to take a break anyway. All right, see you in a little bit.